In this video, we will reveal a number of crucial details that Oda only revealed in the One Piece SBS. And if you are a diehard One Piece fan like me, you must know them. Some of the crazy details we will be discussing in this video are the time when Sanji added poison in Zoro's food in order to get rid of him, the time when Luffy gets a nosebleed after seeing Nami in her birthday suit, the secret origins of kid pirates and heart pirates, Shanks' crew and Zoro's lineage, and many more. Starting off with the time when Sanji tried to get rid of Zoro by mixing poison and razor blades in his food. Hey, don't hate Sanji yet. Hear me out first. See, Zoro and Sanji are known for their constant bickering throughout the series. Before leaving Fishman Island, Zoro makes fun of Sanji, and Sanji responds by threatening to watch out the next time he eats his food. In response, Zoro dares Sanji to put poison and razor blades in his food because he wants to check if he can digest them or not. And guess what? Oda confirmed in an SBS Volume 6 that the crunch crunch sound in this panel is from razor blades that Sanji added to Zoro's food. And it is canon that Zoro can certainly digest razor blades and poison. Dang, Sanji would have to find another way to get back to Ma's head because these cheap tricks are not going to kill Zoro. Okay, so this fact fight may clear Absalom's image in your minds, at least a bit. Oda revealed in SBS Volume 71 that Absalom has been working as a writer for the World Economic Journal. His devil fruit powers enable him to capture the best images, and he is the one who covered the Marineford War. Oda also implied that Absalom is the one who saved Maria from Doflamingo's assassination attempt. I am relieved to know that Absalom holds some importance in One Piece, aside from being a completely trashy character. Absalom's obsession with Nami was unreal, which reminds me of the time when Luffy pulled up a Sanji and had a nosebleed because of Nami. Yep, that's right. See, Luffy's character isn't flustered whenever he's around women, which essentially makes him immune to Boa Hancock's seductiveness and petrification powers. Remember when he didn't even bat an eye after seeing Boa's naked body? Despite this, Luffy joins the other male characters in Alabasta to keep at the female baths and gets a nosebleed after seeing Nami in her birthday suit, which left One Piece fans confused as it's not very Luffy-like behavior. Oda addresses this issue in the SBS corner of volume 54, where he claims that Luffy is not uninterested in women, he just is not captivated by them. However, it's different when Usopp is around. Actually, Usopp brings out the worst in Luffy, which resulted in that contentious incident. Everyone deserves a friend like Usopp in their lives. Speaking of friendship, did you know that Kid and Killer's friendship dates back to before they began pirating? Yes, you heard it right. Kid and Killer were best friends since childhood and had a common love interest, Victoria. Well, that seems too contradictory, at least to Kid's demeanor, but it is what it is. To be precise, not only Kid and Killer, but Kid and all of his top officers, Killer, Heat, and Wire, were all born on an unnamed island in the South Blue. This island was not affiliated with the world government and was ruled by a criminal gang. It was divided into four districts, each overseen by a small gang consisting of Kid, Killer, Heat, and Wire. One day, Kid and Killer's love interest, Victoria, was murdered by the country's ruling gang, prompting Kid to join forces with rival gangs led by Killer, Heat, and Wire to overthrow the rulers. Kid then formed a pirate crew with the other gang leaders and set sail on his ship, Victoria Punk, named after his lost love, declaring that he did not want to live in such a small, limited world. Bruh, that is a badass backstory. Oda should draw it and get it animated as well. That would be so cool. This takes us to the origin of Luffy's other rival pirate crew, the Heart Pirates. Law's tragic backstory isn't surprising since most of the characters in One Piece have them as well. However, it's more tragic to think about how Law has essentially been alone since Corazon died. However, it turns out he didn't stay lonely for that long. After witnessing Corazon's death, Law went to the next town where he saw two guys beat a polar bear. He proceeds to save the polar bear, which ultimately leads to all three of them following him. These two kids who were bullying Beppo would later become the other core members of Heart Pirates, Penguin and Shachi, and that is how Heart Pirates were founded. One interesting fact about Heart Pirates is that Beppo is their navigator, and he studied navigation in hopes of returning home to Zoe Island. Beppo is navigating y'all to the subscribe button, so please press it. Don't despise our pookie polar bear. Anyway, did you guys know that Monet and Sugar of the Don Quixote Pirates are actually siblings? Yes, sir. Oda hasn't stated it anywhere in the manga or anime, but he disclosed it in SBS Volume 77, where he also revealed a little backstory of them. Sugar and Monet were rescued by Doflamingo from a terrible situation, prompting them to swear allegiance to him. At the time, Monet was 17 and Sugar was 9. 
mind. Doflamingo Flamingo is also the one who provided them with their devil fruits. Moving on, you guys must remember the time when Admiral Fujitora regretted damaging his eyes because he wanted to see what Luffy's face looked like. A fan asked exactly that, and in SBS Volume 81, Oda replied with this drawing. Bruh, what is that? Our future King of the Pirates is not the most handsome man in the world, but this is mad ugly. There is something wrong with Fujitora's imagination. I must say that. Okay, we all know that Nami's dream is to draw a world map, but we do not see her doing so very often. In pre-time skip, there were some scenes of Nami doing that, but after the time skip, I don't remember Nami doing that even once. Is Nami slacking off, or is she no longer serious about her dream? Worry not, my friend Oda has got us covered. He stated that Nami has a daily routine of drawing maps after dinner, because throughout the day, she is required to give sailing instructions as the navigator, so she has a lot to do on the deck. However, she is obsessed with her dream and follows through on it every day without fail. Hey, Whitebeard always has his bandana thingy on. Ever wondered how he'd look without it? Folks, what I'm going to show you is not my fault, so please forgive me. It is all Oda's doing. Here, bro has his signature mustache on his head as well. I'm afraid y'all won't be able to see Whitebeard the same way again. That's not it. We also have Enel without his bandana. This is what Enel looks like under his bandana. If I'm being honest, he looks nothing like what I'd imagined him to be. I thought he would have an Eminem like hairstyle, but I have to admit that he does not look half bad. Did you guys know that in One Piece there are two characters with the same name? Actually, this is a very rare phenomenon, and I haven't seen many shows that try to give two characters the same name, as it can have some negative consequences. However, Oda gave the same name to this Navy officer and Kinnaman's wife. Both are called Suru. He was inspired for this by the manga Nana, which has two main female protagonists named Nana. Many One Piece fans are curious how Hiyori got to Onigashima, as she was not seen leaving with the others. Oda clarified later that Hiyori arrived at Onigashima during the raid by hiding among Orochi's treasure tributes to the Beast Pirates, which she obtained as an oiren during her visits to the castle. This is why she appeared at the treasure repository during the raid, where the treasure tributes were left. Dang, that is some serious detailing. Oda sure is a genius. Shanks' crew has always been a mystery to us One Piece fans. However, we got a little bit of it in Wano art, but that was not it. Oda clarifies in SBS Volume 101 that, while we frequently see a few members accompanying Shanks, the red hair pirates do have a large number of members. It is just that they do not always move together. This is why Shanks' crew refers to him as Big Boss. This title of Big Boss should give you an idea of the size of Shanks' crew, which is why his top subordinates are also referred to as Big Officers. We saw all of these Big Officers during the Marineford War, as only nine of them attended with their Big Boss, Shanks. These nine Big Officers are Ben Beckman, Lucky Roo, Yasup, Lime Juice, Bonk Punch, Monster, Building Snake, Hongu, Howling Gap. Some of y'all must be wondering why I didn't include Rockstar in this list. Well, Rockstar does not possess this rank. Rather, he is the messenger of the Red-Haired Pirates. Oda also reveals that the Red-Haired Pirates have many subordinate pirate crews under their umbrella, though he likens Shanks' relationship with them to that of the Straw Hat Grand Fleet, where he doesn't really rule over them. Another important tidbit that has been revealed in recent SBS comes in Zoro's family line. Many fans have assumed that Zoro came from a lineage of samurai, given his swordsmanship, and that is correct. Oda reveals through Volume 105's SBS that Zoro hails from the samurai that left Wano a few decades before the current timeline. After saving a village from bandits, ten of those samurai started their own village and called it Shimotsuki Village. Both Zoro and Kuina are descendants of those samurai. Furthermore, Shimotsuki Furiko, Zoro's grandmother, was Shimotsuki Ushimaru's sister. Ushimaru was the former daimyo of Ringo and a descendant of the legendary swordsman Shimotsuki Ryuma. So yeah, Zoro turned out to be a descendant of sword god Ryuma, which pretty much explains his indomitable swordsmanship. Like Shanks' crew and Zoro's family, Revolutionary Army is also a huge mystery in One Piece. Click this video to find out all 19 known members of it. Click it!